I have confirmed with our council that tonight's meeting and the public hearing that has been convened for tonight uh, is in accordance with chapter 417 of the New York State Laws of 2021, which allows public bodies to meet and to take actions without permitting in-person public access to meetings and which authorizes such meetings and public hearings to be held remotely by telephone or video conference, provided that the public has the ability to view or listen and that such meetings are recorded and later transcribed. Francine, as Planning Board Secretary, please confirm that the meeting tonight has been duly noticed and please state for the record whether such notice has been posted and published. It has been duly noticed, posted and published. Thank you. The notice provides provided instructions for members of the public as to how to review and participate in tonight's meeting. The public has been provided with the ability to view tonight's meeting as a regular planning board meeting on TV or online. This meeting is being broadcast live on LMC TV, channel 35 on Fios, channel 76 on Optimum, and also online at lmctv.org. During this meeting, viewers can send an email to, and let me spell this, P-U-B-L-I-C-Q-C, P-U-B-L-I-C-Q-C, at townofmamaranekny.org with questions or comments. A transcript of tonight's meeting will be provided at a later date. Francine, for the record, please call the roll to reflect which planning board members are present tonight. Ralph Engel. Present. Elizabeth Cooney. Here. Edmund Vitasian. Here. Tyra Block. Here. Sarah Dunn. Here. John Cuddy. Here. Okay, we have a quorum. In addition, let me again introduce Robin Nishinsky, who has now joined us. Hi, everyone. Okay, for those of you who don't know her, as uh, I said before, she is the newest member of the town board, and she is now our liaison to the town board. So if we have any problems, blame her or ask her for help. <laughs> okay, uh, in addition to the members of the planning board and now Robin, who identified themselves or said they are present, and after they were at, their names were called, the members or professional staff should please identify themselves. Lisa Robert Wasp, town engineer. Sorry, Lisa. That's okay. Lisa Hockman, counsel to the planning board. Lisa. Hi. Anthony Oliveri, consultant engineer to the planning board. Elizabeth. Elizabeth Atchison, environmental planner, town of Mamarinic. And Francine. Francine Brill, secretary. I think we got everybody. Okay. To ensure that the members of the public can follow along tonight, Rob, please confirm that all materials to be discussed this evening, which documents have uh, previously been distributed to the planning board members, have been posted at least 24 hours ago on the town website, although I understand there may have been some questions as to some wording. Yes, Ralph. Um, both all the application documents to be considered tonight were available on the on the town website for at least 24 hours. We confirmed yesterday that the draft minutes to be reviewed by the board tonight were also posted at least 24 hours prior to this meeting. Thank you very much. Okay, we have a very short agenda tonight. The first item is a review of the draft minutes of our meeting of January 12th, which was our most recent meeting. Hopefully everybody's had a chance to review them. And if there are any comments, corrections, et cetera, now's the time. I read nothing. Nothing. Anybody else? No. You know, I take that back. <laughs> uh, 
there was a page here where there was some extraneous uh, parenthetical. Yes, already stated above. Yeah, uh, on page three. So I guess that needs to come out. Okay. Lisa, you'll take care of that, please, if you haven't already. Yes, thank you. Okay. Anybody have any other items? Okay, then may, uh, as mildly modified, may we have a motion to accept the minutes? So moved. Second. And all in favor, please say aye and raise your hand. Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Done. Okay, we have one item on the agenda tonight from a new applicant or prior applicant back for public hearing. Uh, it involves 7 Madison Avenue, a restaurant called Company Chop House, uh, which is, has applied for a special use permit. Do we have anybody here to speak on behalf of the applicant? Thank you, Ralph. I'm going to be uh, bringing in the applicant team now. Thank you. Hey, welcome, Tom, Nick, and Ralph. Uh, please let us know once you're situated and able to speak. I Nick. can. Yeah, Ralph, you you you're blocked as to speaking at the moment. There you go. Okay. Well, um, who's going to speak on behalf of the three of you, or will you all speak? I'll speak, Tom. Go ahead, please. Okay, Tom, you're on. Oh, okay. Um, so, I, just one question for Robert. I, I saw I saw the um, the draft resolution that that was posted on the site, and Robert, I had sent to you and to to Richard Polcari an alternative. Uh, drawing, you had indicated to me that you and, and Richard had reviewed it and that it was satisfactory and that would allow to leave the fence and relocate one of the parking spaces on the side, which is in the drawing, and also whether or not the, um, that the uh, curb bumpers were not needed. I don't think that was code. So I uh, correct. Um, so yeah, so just to bring the rest of the board up to speed, so uh, it is true, Mr. Tory did reach out uh, both to the building inspector and myself in the last two days to review the draft resolution. Obviously, the um, the compliance items that were referenced to Rich's uh, site inspection memo were discussed. Um, two of the items on the memo referred to uh, the removal of vinyl fence in parking space number three, and the fifth item was installation of curb stops. Uh, those are strictly referring back to the original approved parking lot for the site. Mr. Torrey has circulated a proposed slight modification to their parking layout that essentially shifts the spaces. I can actually show that uh, to the board now, although it is a, a relatively minor change. Um, we'll give that a second to load up. Hopefully you can all see that. Am I on the right screen? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what you can see is that now one of the parking bays was relocated, just flipping it from where that fence and, and uh, would have to be removed. Uh, there's nothing in the code that would limit that to be done. Uh, same thing for the curb stops. The code does not require them. They were just part of the original plan and Mr. Tory requested to remove them. Uh, he would not have to put them in. Uh, so both the building department and I, I have no objection to this and we would just recommend that um, this would be documented as, a, as, a, as an actual approved minor change to their site layout map that is submitted. I mean, the issue that I have with this is that we have a rule requiring 14 days advance notice so that people can view things other than at a meeting, so that the professional staff can review them, and so the members of this board can remove them, re remove them, review them, sorry. Uh, I think my own personal view is 
that we ought to proceed as we are at the moment. And if the applicant wants to then amend its uh, application to do that, that I think probably is an amended site plan. I mean, isn't it, uh, Rob? Uh, I would respectfully disagree. Um, something like this, since they're not intensifying the use or any other impact to the neighborhood, I would, I would argue that it's a, a de minimis impact. If you were to be reducing the overall parking counter, you know, doing something that's going to increase the intensity of the use of the parking lot, then you know, I think that'd be a different story and, and certainly would be a change for a site plan. Uh, something I have to minor. agree with Rob. I agree with Rob. I think this is de minimis. What are the others view? I'm on board with Rob. Um, I agree with everybody, but more importantly, I think we've put these applicants through more service to use a legal term than anybody deserves. So let's just get this done. Right. Great. Maybe the way to think about it is as we would any kind of field change on a site plan that's de minimis like this, that it's in the hands of the building inspector and the town engineer to document it and that's it. Yeah, I think in, um, in, in a typical order, this is something that we would always like to see come in prior to the 14 day rule, but given that Mr. Tory only had a couple of days to take a look at the resolution, you know, I think it was a fair request and uh, I think it's worthy of proving as a condition. Well, um, I still agree with the 14 day rule, but in this particular case, I'll, I would like to use the word as Rob phrased it, de minimis change. Well, what we have in the, in the draft resolution are a bunch of conditions. And it would seem to me that this, we could get where we're going by simply changing those or eliminating those conditions that would no longer apply. Right. Permit us to finish everything today and uh, get this done. I mean, the, the, the conditions, I'll just read what we have. Okay, the six of them. Removal of all fence posts in the parking area, that doesn't change apparently. Removal of the vinyl fence in parking space number three, that would condition would be eliminated. Removal of all planters in the parking area. I'm not sure if there are any planters in the parking area. Yeah. Uh, th there are? Okay, well, uh, what do you plan to do with those then, Tom? So, uh, yeah, we, just, we have to get a dumpster for it, so we're just, we're just waiting for the roll-off company to, to tell us when they can drop off the dumpster and we'll get rid of those. Okay, so that's that can stay. The striping of the parking spaces, which can't be done until the weather gets better anyway, but that presumably you would do anyway. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Installation of curb st uh, stops could be eliminated. Right. And yeah. the dumpster to be moved into the existing enclosure, that's okay. It has been. It has been already. So I think rather than having to deal with the question of 14 days or not, we can solve this problem by just changing the conditions as we've just discussed. I think that will get you to where you want to go. And that would be great. Still permit us to follow our own rules. That would so be that, uh, Lisa, do you see any problem with that? I do not. I just want to make sure that so we're removing um, condition number 6B and 6E, is there anything else? Lisa, I was just going to point to my comment before that uh, comment number four already says that to the satisfaction of the town engineer, the applicant shall submit a legible up-to-date and true to, true to scale site layout plan. So the small change that we discussed would be captured on that condition. Oh, very good. Yeah, that's up to you. <laughs> very good. Okay, All right. So... So then if I eliminate those two, should I eliminate all the conditions then and just let, maybe I should. No, uh, just I eliminate the two that we discussed. Okay, just A and E, six A and E. Okay, we'll do. When, when, no, the, the removal of the vinyl fence in parking space three should come out. Yes, B. B, sorry, thank you. B okay. and E, I have those, I have those struck, uh, B and E. Okay, and they, uh, it's also a whereas clause, Lisa. On the I think on the first page. Well, I think we can. Um, yeah, I think that would that ought to get modified to match. That's well, I it, think I ha I have to leave that as is. But what I can do is add because that memo that's quoting from the memo. But I can add a recital 
saying the applicant submitted an amended sketch plan addressing the issues raised in the building inspector's memo, which um, satisfied some of the conditions therein, something to that effect? Yeah, fine with me. Anybody have a problem with that? No. Okay. Well, I, Lisa, I think uh, the language in uh, item six has to be modified slightly because what's in the uh, building inspector's memo uh, is partly moot. The moving of the dumpster, you mean? Yeah, so maybe just strike the uh, first, the in accordance with the building inspector's memo. I just agree. I, I agree. We can we can just get rid of that whole phrase. Okay. okay. So now that we've discussed this, can we have a motion to open the public hearing to see so if moved. any member of the public has anything to say? So moved. Second? Second. In favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Public hearing is open. Rob, is there any member of the public uh, who wants to speak? And uh, Liz, do we have any emails? Well, I would typically say at this time that anybody who's in the attendees group for the meeting who wishes to speak on the matter, to please raise their hand. However, we have no other attendees in the group. Um, as stated, if anybody's watching this on LMC TV, if you've sent an email, it's been into the town's email account, publicqc at townofamerinicny.org. Uh, Liz, has anybody sent emails? No, we haven't received any emails. Okay. Okay, um, we have a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Hearing is closed. Then can we have a motion to adopt the resolution of approving the special use permit with the modifications we discussed? Uh, I think we need to insert some language about the hours of operation. Oh, that's a good point. Okay, what kind, what is it that you have in mind? And I would say that if there is an intention to go for outdoor seating at some point, that could be very different than indoor seating. So uh, we plan on, you know, uh, Friday and Saturday uh, dinner service till ten o'clock. Um, the kitchen will the kitchen will cease operating at ten. So whatever diners come in at ten. So I would say we probably wouldn't be here past uh, eleven thirty midnight. Uh, we don't plan on operating a a nightclub bar here till two three o'clock in the morning. I'm too old for that, and my kids will kill me. And during the week, during the week, we'll close much earlier. Nine o'clock Sunday, we'll probably be out of here by um, eight o'clock. What time do you uh, expect to open? Um, so we will open for lunch at noon. Okay, so your desired hours, if I understood it correctly, are starting at noon every day? Correct. Correct? Yes, During sir. During the week, closing at? Yeah, I mean, I, I would, I would put it, you know, I would put it in there. Let's say, say, yeah, let's say, you know, 10, 11 o'clock, depending on, on how business flows. Is it, is, is it acceptable, Mr. Angles? Just keep in mind, given your experience, that you don't have to stay open all of those hours. Right. But if you put a, a, a time frame around it, you can't stay open past those hours. I would say if we left it as midnight. I, I, I would be more generous. And so to, to, to Mr. Block's comment, can can we say noon to, to... Well, why don't you say 10.30 or 11 a.m. until whatever time? 10.30, 11 a.m. to midnight. Perfect. That's fine. Seven, seven days a week. Correct. Seven days a week, yeah. Yeah, there's no downside to that. Yeah, so I mean, and, and, and maybe, uh, and, and yeah, I would say midnight or 1 a.m., maybe the exception is New Year's Eve. I, I don't know, but... But it's, if, it, if it were flexible, why don't we say 10.30 to, to, to 1 a.m.? And say 1 a.m. That's it. Thank you, Mr. Block. Um, Rob, do we have, we don't have um, 
restrictions on hours for restaurants in that area, do we? I'd have. Do we need to check the code on the permissible hours? Yeah, I was going to say not that I'm familiar with, but we should definitely double check that. Well, okay. Why don't you just say subject to existing code to a uh, legal uh, right. right. Say give the hours or say or in accordance with the local code if, if shorter. Got and, it. Uh, Rob, in the past, when there was a restaurant, and we know there's an apartment building right behind it, have there been any complaints that you know of? None that I'm aware of, no. Okay, then I don't think it should be a problem. You're you know, inquiring they also got, they you're probably also about got operational noticed. issues, Ralph, not, not, not cuisine, right? <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't hear you, Eva. You're inquiring about operational matters, not cuisine or service. That is correct. We assume cuisine and service will all be spectacular. Yes. Ralph, um, I should actually just just correct for the record that um, I, I do believe that I had heard about a complaint at one point, but that was that was related to an outdoor seating use that's not being proposed mm -hmm. at this time. So I do actually remember that it just popped in my head. Okay, so in the event that there's an application at some point for outdoor seating, that can be dealt with then. Not now. Okay. Lisa, I think there's a uh, <clears throat> typo in the first whereas clause. The uh, it should simply read the applicant and the, the name of the uh, restaurant should not be uh, recited. You're right. Thank you. Yeah, and actually, I I I have a question on that also. So, should it be the applicant and and the owner of the property together? Is my question. Well, it's, the owner it's, of the it's, property it's, is not operating a restaurant. He doesn't need. Right. A special permit to own the property. You, the oh. owner has to approve the applicant asking for a special permit. Oh, okay, got, got, got it. There. Understood. Thank it's you. Only the use. Okay. And you know, you, you have approved it so far as I know. Yes, I saw that. I saw the paperwork for that. Okay. So, guys, are we ready to go? Okay. Uh, all in favor of adopting the now mildly modified resolution, please say aye. And Wait, um, I'm sorry, I didn't get the, mo the who made the motion. Nobody made I, a motion. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm, sorry, we got, I'm sorry, I skipped one. Okay. Uh, okay, let's have a motion to adopt the resolution as now modified. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Good luck, guys. Have a good Thank time. You. So Thank you do time today. It looks very nice. Thank you guys so much. We'll see you around here soon. Please come by. Appreciate yeah. it. You bet. Have a great evening. Take care. Take care. Okay. There's nothing else on the agenda, although the, the, we had, had a discussion before about possibly having discussion tonight regarding, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, a request that we'd had from the in the past as to input on possible zoning problems, changes, things that we approved that we might not have if zoning did not uh, require us to, and the limitations that are on the planning board uh, as to a lot of these things. However, so far as I know, and Robin, please correct me if I'm wrong, the town board is not yet up to uh, looking into zoning issues. It's considering it, but isn't there yet. So that our discussion would probably be premature. Uh, the request we had in the past came from your predecessor as a liaison. Uh, and I guess if we're asked to do it again, now we have you, and I'm happy to have you. Uh, if you would like us to do it, the kind of thing I spoke about, uh, please let us know. At that point, we'll look into it. Okay, thank you. You're, you're uh, non-audio. Hi. All right. Yeah, we also discussed how, how um, these issues could come up in the context of the comprehensive plan. Um, yeah. Although 
depending upon how detailed and specific they are. So um, we can wait until that issue arises and is in front of the board. You know, um, I don't want to lengthen the meeting, so I'm only going to say this. Uh, I don't think there's a necessity, of course, I'm not on the town board. Uh, individual members of the planning board or other members of the community can communicate their experience. I don't know that we have to do it in a collective way, simply because that complicates compliance with the open meetings law. So uh, if I had something to say, I don't, I would feel free to do it independently and not to have it come through uh, a collective uh, comment from the planning board. Well, I think there might be an opportunity um, in the um, development of the comprehensive plan uh, that where the, um, the members of the steering committee and there will be, and I believe it's Ralph, right? Who's gonna no. be on the steering committee will be going to all the different um, committees in the town and talking to the different groups and asking for their suggestions about things that the town um, should consider doing you know, it's just as part of our plan for the next decade or how, however long this plan is going to be in place. So I think that your group will be consulted in that context. And I'm sure that there will be compliance as required under the open meetings law for that discussion. So I, I think it can happen in that context. Yeah, I think you're gonna have two chances, one through the planning board and another one on your own. And I do know from past experience and Robin, was on the last, is that the right term? I don't know, steering committee uh, for the prior version of this, that the whole purpose of the steering committee and of the comprehensive plan is to get a large amount of public input, both from organizations and from individuals and neither precludes the other. All right, that said, if there's ever an issue that um, you feel uh, I should bring before the board a particular issue that uh, comes up a lot or causes problems, um, you know, let me know in my role as liaison. This is a public meeting right here. Um, and I would, um, you know, let the board know that there's been issues around a certain law or, or whatever it is, and, and that the board could then look at that or re-examine issues. Well, let me just say, since you just invited it, that we have in the past discussed issues about the lack of the ability of the planning board and there being no other board to do things such as make sure that to the extent possible that applicants who come before the planning board for, for example, swimming pools, and applicants who don't come for the, before the planning board for say swimming pools are treated alike. And the same applies to concepts of expansion versus new houses and the concept of tearing a house down, you probably know about this one, to the, the subfloor of its first floor. And thus, since it was not a whole new house, it never had to come to the planning board in the first place. Whereas if they simply taken up the subfloor uh, they would have. So among, among things we had discussed was consistency, treating everybody in the town pretty much alike and not permitting people to skirt rules by playing games. Well, I would say that um, that's a good subject to bring up when you're having a discussion with the steering committee who might be looking at all these different rules to find this consistency. And um, they would maybe want to know exactly what, oh, yeah. how, how they would have to consider how this could be addressed, obviously, um, because it sounds like there's some sort of loophole that people are using perhaps, or, um, you know, I don't know how that specific issue would be addressed. Yeah, no, I, I'm not suggesting that, you know, we can solve the problem in five minutes here. Yeah. Uh, but there are, there are loopholes in the town law and we have no power, even when we find them, to do anything about them. So 
if, if the power is not going to be here, which is okay, there's no architecture review board, there's nobody who can deal with shadows, there's nobody who can deal with bulk issues. There's lots of things of that sort, which planning boards in other places, such as the one I was on for 20 years in the village of, of Larchmont, deal with. And they even have a, an architectural review board. And here we only have one for commercial properties. So, you know, there are various things which are simply not reviewed at all, except in the building department. And we certainly get complaints from residents when they get a chance to do it about trees being cut, about all sorts of things, which, for example, you can cut the trees on your property without any real problem if you do it before you come here. But if you file an application here first, Liz Aitchinson will make sure that you treat the trees properly and be backed up by us. Okay, and the same trees, same property. And uh, we've had clear cutting kind of things by people who did it just before. So I'm just giving you examples because I think you're new to this and on the steering committee, we never got this far. Right, we never got this far. I can tell you actually that the um, the tree law in the town is being looked at right now. Oh, okay. Um, exactly what it's gonna look like when they're finished looking and they bring it to the town council, I'm not sure, but um, when it does come out, I think I would hope all of you would have an opportunity to take a look at it and comment upon it. Um, so that's one at least that's in, in the works right now. Um, in terms of the architectural review board and it applying only to a commercial and not uh, residential properties, that's certainly an, an easy thing to, to recommend when um, the steering committee comes and talks you know, to your board. So hopefully in that process, anything that's really a significant issue can, can be addressed and then um, you know, we can move forward from there. Thank you. Anybody uh, I'm sorry. I, I just want to say I'm, I'm honored to be on your board. I think you do important work and I'm very happy to be here. Thank you. So thank you for welcoming me as your liaison. Thank you. We hope you will have a chance to attend many of our meetings. I know once in a while they conflict with the board meetings, but we try to avoid that. Okay. Thanks, everybody. And we, and we, anybody have anything further or can we call it an evening? Well, since we don't need a motion to end the meeting, the meeting has simply ended. Have a good time, everybody. Good night. Well. Good night. Good night, everybody. Take good care. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.